Hi, Mr. Townsley. Michael Ye. How do you do? Good, thank you. When Jason Townsley began experiencing unusual symptoms a few years ago, he didn't realize they were classic signs of hyperparathyroidism. Brain fogginess, aches and pains in my muscles and bones, um, irritability, things like that. Without any rhyme or reason, for a few days I'll be very irritable and for a few days I'll be very fatigued. When his doctors couldn't pinpoint the source of his problem, Jason, who lives more than a thousand miles away, decided to seek treatment with Dr. Michael Ye, Chief of Endocrine Surgery at UCLA. He had a scan done in Billings, Montana, and that was negative. A lot of the scans that are done on the outside are really not that sensitive. I started researching my options on the internet and I found several different people that did the minimal invasive procedure. But uh, what I liked about Dr. Ye and UCLA was they weren't um, trying to sell a service. They were just putting their information online and letting you know you make your own decision on whether or not you wanted to pursue that or not. Using the latest state-of-the-art imaging equipment available at UCLA, Dr. Ye was able to locate an abnormal parathyroid gland. The parathyroid glands are four calcium-regulating glands in the neck. They're quite small. Each one is about the size of a grain of rice. They were actually the last glands or last organs of any kind discovered in mammals. What they do is they regulate the body's calcium. That's their main purpose. For reasons that are not yet known, one or more of the parathyroid glands can go into overdrive, producing massive amounts of the parathyroid hormone, also called PTH. The result is primary hyperparathyroidism. Diagnosing it usually requires a simple blood test. Large amounts of parathyroid hormone going to the bone, calcium continuously coming out of the bone, causing the blood calcium to rise. Ultimately, that excess calcium is going to get filtered by the kidney. Uh, it can cause kidney damage and kidney stones. The disease is most common in postmenopausal women who have a high risk for osteoporosis and, particularly, hip fractures. Up to 1% of women over 50 are affected by primary hyperparathyroidism. That, it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you talk about 1%, that is one of the most common diseases we face in medicine. The good news is, in most patients, a minimally invasive 20-minute surgery is all it takes to get cured. 90% of patients with primary hyperparathyroidism have a single parathyroid adenoma or benign tumor that is causing the problem, and the remaining glands are normal. Having said that, there is that 10%, and oftentimes they can be picked up on scan, and there are some times where even if the scan doesn't show a second abnormal gland, they can have it at the time of surgery, which has led us to this belt and suspenders approach to the operation where we simultaneously check all four glands and measure the parathyroid hormone level in real time. And with both of those, we have an increased security. In 2011, Dr. Ye and his team decided, instead of looking at just the suspected gland, they would inspect all four parathyroid glands in every surgery patient as a matter of course. Through a one-inch incision and using a muscle-sparing approach, the thyroid is moved aside and the abnormal parathyroid gland is removed. The remaining three glands are inspected. We've removed the offending gland. We've seen three other normal glands. That leaves little to no chance that a rogue gland would stay undetected in the body and dramatically decreases the risk of repeat operations. When we were operating, we had three blood levels for parathyroid hormone. Now the, the operation itself, were, there was no blood lost. We've drawn three levels by now, so let's go take a look at what's going on in the lab while the patient's waking up. Ye analyzes the patient's PTH levels before, during, and right after surgery. The effects of the operation are immediate. It's fallen by half at five minutes, you know, a little more than half, and it'll likely fall again. The out-of-control hormones that wreaked havoc on the body are back to normal levels before the patient even leaves the operating room. In a patient with an abnormally high level of PTH, that hormone is just streaming out of the abnormal gland continuously. Once we close off the blood supply, it's got nowhere to go. So then every five minutes, that level should drop by half. So we're looking for that decay, and then usually by the time the patient's eyes open, we know it's normal. What we find is we can cure about 99% of people durably with this approach. I wish that number were 100%, but there's just that 1% of people that have very challenging cases. 
My scar looks little and she said once I take the bandage off, it's even smaller. Patients like Nilly Kempler are usually surprised to see that the surgery hasn't left much of a trace and hardly any pain. What's more, patients leave that same day with minimal recovery time. I was told I can resume normal activities right away, uh, exercise within a day or two, and heavy lifting, you know, two to three days after that. Two-thirds of patients have a significant improvement in the quality of life after parathyroid surgery. Within two years of parathyroid surgery, a woman with osteoporosis will gain bone and hold on to that bone for 10 years or more. It's really a dramatic improvement. In order to be a professional at anything, it involves repetition, doing things a lot. We've done that for years here, and I'm really proud of the level of quality that we offer. I'm completely convinced that we offer the highest level of care available in the world. It is good to come and get a high level of quality, but it is even better to come here and be treated like you're really somebody special and to be embraced as a member of the family. And this is no exaggeration. I really feel that that's the level of care I want to give to every patient.